Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with our very first episode of Space Station Zero. This is a battle portrait series that is dedicated to the brand new uh, skirmish game created by Snarling Badger Studios. Snarling Badger Studios, of course, being uh, founded by Adam Loper, as well as Vince Venturilla of both Tabletop Minions, as well as Warhammer Weekly fame right here on YouTube. They actually made a game previously in the past called Rain in Hell, which is a fantastic demonic skirmish battle game. And this time they made a science fiction game called Space Station Zero. It's a good combination of solo, co-op, as well as competitive play. And we are going to be shooting our very first scenario with that, with our very first battle report. Now, of course, for those of you guys who are interested, I suggest you go to the uh, Wargaming Vault website or get yourself a copy of the rules set from Space Station Zero. I also have a video that will show up here in the description box below that will show you guys uh, our review of that gaming product. And as you can see, we have our table set up for our very first scenario where I'm actually going to start off with a solo play campaign on the system is how it's going to work. My gaming buddies and I, you know, we do a lot of battle reports for me, but unfortunately my friends only have so much limited time. So to do another Space Station Zero on top of the content we're already doing is a little bit more difficult for them to do. So because of that, I'm going to start off with a solo play campaign and see how that works. And of course, if my friends get interested and they want to join in later on, they could, uh, they could easily do so. So for my solo play campaign, uh, let's talk about my crew real quick. This crew is called Thundrix Profiteers. It should look familiar to you guys because this is from the old world uh, Warhammer Underworlds uh, campaign system. This is a miniatures agnostic game, so you can pretty much use whatever miniatures that you want to as well. And as you can see here, I also got some dramatic lighting going on <laughs> with my battle report. Got some light kits on this one, so I'm really excited about that. So let's go and talk about what my crew consists of. So right here in the front, we have Bjorg and Thundrick. He is my commander. He's got an energy missile weapon. Um, as well as point-to-point -point teleporters, where he's equipped with as well. Oh, sorry, not tele uh, point-to-point teleporter. I'm sorry. He's equipped with a um, jump boots. What he has. That's right. That way, his ability to fly. There we go. He's also got uh, the armored force edge for my groups. That way, all my guys have armor six. He's also got the logistics expert uh, special ability as well. In the back over here, we have Kazgan Drax Skewer. He's one of my soldiers. He's also got a heavy weapon, uh, melee weapon. He's got a point-to-point -point teleporter. He's also got armor force six for his edge, as well as a combat specialist rule. Right in the front is Garrod Allenson. He is my pilot. He's got an energy missile weapon, as well as a hyperscanner, armored force six for edge, as well as awareness. Right next on the left-hand side, that is Deadeye Lund. That is my medical officer. He's got an energy missile weapon, as well as a medibag. He's also equipped with Armor Force 6 War Edge as well as Medical Attention. And then finally, all the way in the back here, this character, his name is uh, Enric Ironhale. He's my engineer. He's got a heavy kinetic missile weapon, Armor Force 6 for his Edge, as well as weapon tuning. And my crew is a four-man crew, so that way they have a little bit more, uh, actually, that way they have better stats because I wanted a really small, elite group of guys. And at the same time, their ship type is shipping, so that's the reason why they got some so much advanced technology as well as some really good weaponry because according to the crew tables, they can take whatever equipment they want to because they are merchants. And so just like all the other people who get stranded in Space Station Zero, Thunderous Profiteer is planning on exploring the depths of Space Station Zero to figure out what mysteries is keeping them here and potentially how they can get back home to their home world. So yeah, very excited about trying out this product. I really did the review, but the rules, it looked really fantastic. So we're gonna start our very first solo play with this one, of course. And as always, we will be doing the Docking Bay Challenge because that's the very first challenge every single crew takes when they decide to go explore Space Station Zero. So we're gonna take a quick break real quick. We'll come back here in a second, get the table set up and then begin our very first scenario. Here we go. Docking Bay Zero is a relatively safe area within the vast darkness of the space station. Leaving it behind, you enter one of the countless docking bay access points that connect the safe zone to the wild and unexplored areas beyond. These bays are all broken down, barely lit, and full of dangers. Even the first step into the depths of the space station are not easy. So this is the very first challenge that my uh, crew will be taking upon. So Thunder Profiteer will need to go through the uh, docking bay access point. Of course, I do need to roll up two different challenges on this one for my obstacles and enemies. And I actually roll a one getting the poison gas leak challenge as well as a 10 getting ancient centuries. For the poison gas leak, it's a chemical test. It says the old and broken down pipes have started leaking potential and toxic gas into the bay. The three locations marked on the map are the sources of a poison gas leak leak. 
Each time a crew member activates, they must pass a life save with a success number equal to the number of active poison gas leaks. If they fail, they suffer damage equal to the amount of which they failed the test. The poison gas leaks can be disarmed. This requires a reaction challenge test 3, which may be made by any crew member within one inch of a poison gas leak. And for the second challenge, which is Ancient Centuries, Alien Technology, it says this access bay is guarded by robotic guards so ancient that they are barely functional, though they still have enough energy to threaten your crew. Set up six Ancient Centuries per crew participating in this challenge. The Ancient Centuries are set up equally divided between the two zones marked on the map. An Ancient Century has a life of two, movement of three, combat score of three, reaction of two, and intelligence of one. And the Ancient Centuries are armed with Jagged Claws, which is a close combat combat weapon which gives them a plus one to their combat challenge. Now in order to end this challenge what I must do is that it ends when all enemies are defeated. Your crew discovers multiple exits leading out of this area and discuss which exit to take. Eventually they decide to leave it up to chance in which case I'll need to roll a d12 to figure out where I'm going to next with my next challenge in my solo play campaign. And that pretty much makes up the scenario rules for this one. So with the scenario rules over with, I'm gonna end this video real quick by showing you my roster. I'm gonna let that hang there for a couple of seconds so you exactly see what my crew is packing for this one. All right, so we're back with our Docking Bay Zero scenario. This is the very first challenge that all crews must take when they decide to venture out directly into the depths of Space Station Zero. So as you can see, we're playing on a two by three zone mortalis table because this is a miniatures agnostic game. So we use whatever we like on this one. So the challenges I rolled up on this one is poison gas. So you can see I have three terminals. Terminal number one is located down here on the bottom of the screen. Terminal number two is right here next behind the step and then terminal number three, which is located over here at the top of the table. All those three table, those terminals are actually responsible for pumping out poison gas and I have to take environmental challenges and uh, see if I succeed. If I don't, I take the same amount of damage for every single gas leak that I don't have. At the same time, I also have two, uh, two groups of six sentries I gotta worry about. These are old robotic sentries. As you can see, I'm using House of Ansar miniatures from Nick or Munda to represent those three there. And the exact same thing from the other three over here. We did a conversion work on these guys, giving them silver skulls, making them look like T-800s from Terminator. So that's what I gotta worry about over there as well. And my goal, of course, is to eliminate all the enemies and to succeed in all the challenges as well. And over here, of course, I have my deployment. Here is my crew, Thundrix Profiteers. Up on the point, we have Garrod Allenson, my pilot, fall right behind him by uh, Enric Ironhelm, my engineer, or Annex is my medical officer, Dead Eye Lund, and the back is Bjorgen Thundrick, and of course, up the front is Kazgan Draxkewer. So I do have my work cut out for me. I got a good mix of people, so that should help me out in order to achieve a lot of different objectives. At the same time, deal with a lot of challenges. At the same time, I also have a lot of equipment as well as weaponry, so that should really help me out, as well as some really fast movers with flying abilities, with jump boots, as well as point-to-point -point teleporters to really go across the table. So I am liking my odds so far. So yeah. This is the tabletop established for our very first challenge of Space Station Zero. I get the initiative on this one, so I will be going first. We'll come back after my very first activation. All right, you guys, so we're back after the uh, after turn number one, actually. I forgot to take some of the uh, videos of my activations. I'm sorry about that, you guys. I got really excited. I was actually moving through, but not very much actually happened in terms of drama. So let's go ahead and talk about what happened first. So first of all, I had initiative. And of course, the first thing I did, of course, is I activated Garrod Allison, my uh, pilot. I actually moved move up twice forward up to this location here. And the reason why is because I forgot that there's no such thing as range in this game. So long as you got line of sight of target, you can actually shoot. So I did make that first roll mistake. So uh, I do apologize for that however though over here as you can see over the top of the screen the ancient sentries started moving out directly from their main areas and started heading forward after that the, the very first guy actually moved up forward right over here after that i then activated my engineer that engineer's name being enric iron hell i decided to use his weapon tuning ability on his heavy kinetic weapon and he actually opened fire because i remember there's no range in this game so i moved him up normally because that's his very first action then i activated his weapon using that weapon tuning took up my very first opponent which is this ancient sentry over here on the top of the screen now from there of course some more guys moved around Around. However, the most dramatic effect took over here. I had Dilai Lund move up forward. He tried to shoot. Unfortunately for me, though, I was able to pass the combat test on that one. So nothing much happened there. Same thing with Bjorgen Thundrick down over here. 
He moved up in order to shoot through this window over here, as you can see here, directly at these alien sentries making the way forward. Unfortunately, though, I was able to beat their combat tests, so nothing much happened there. Kazgan Drexkewer, though, was the guy who had the most dramatic in the movement. The reason why is because of his point to point teleporter. For where he was located at, he had line of sight from right back over here against this wall directly to this bulkhead. So that was his very first action. And then from there, I have him move forward with line of sight maximally he could down this corridor to make his way to his very first gas uh, poison gas that way i can get rid of that and take down the uh, challenge for that one and that pretty much makes up all of turn number one with all of its activations so far so yeah if you're loving this game so far just gotta remember that of course unless i'm using a close attack weapon there really isn't any range modifiers so with that being said we go directly to the top of turn number two and once again i roll for i get initiative first so we go first all right, so we're back now after the start of turn number two, my very first activation. So first of all, let's go and talk about my very first activation. Over here on this side, I activated Gazgan Drax Skewer. So I had to move up close directly to this poison gas. I did have him take his reaction test to try to turn it off, but unfortunately I failed it, so nothing much really happened there. So that part was horrific. After that, for my next activation, I then activated Bjorgen Thundrick. Uh, for, uh, actually rolled a six plus on the activation, so I was able to go next. So I actually flew him, actually using his jump boots, moved him 14 inches away from this area, had him fly seven inches directly to the base of this wall, and then another seven inches directly to rid of this poison gas as well. So hopefully I can get this taken care of before these guys actually react, just come charging toward me and causing me all kinds of problems. And of course, when I rolled again for my activation, I rolled a 12. So this time I once again activated Enric Ironhell. Enric Ironhell opened fire with this heavy uh, missile weapon, connect missile weapon directly into the very front of the ancient sentries. But unfortunately though, I failed from that one. So I was able to do that. And of course, I tried to roll again to get an uh, initiative, but unfortunately I lost the activation. So because of that, we go directly back to now, to the aliens and the NPCs. All right, so that drinks directly the end of turn number two. So let's talk about exactly what ended up happening. So first of all, down over here, down below, uh, as you can see, because I was the closest enemy fighter to them, Bjorgen Thundrick was, uh, the rest of the uh, ancient sentries started making their way directly towards him, which is a really bad spot for him to be in because he could be easily outnumbered. So I'm thinking maybe I might have to fly out of here and come back and take care of this uh, take care of this challenge in another moment at the same time over here on the top uh it was pretty much lackluster i did have my guys open fire with their guns but unfortunately in there, i was just just flubbing my rolls just rolling a bunch of twos ones uh, a couple of threes so i was able to cause any damage to these ancient sentries whatsoever they're slowly coming closer to me so that part is pretty rough and so far that makes up turn number two on this one as well so i haven't been able to turn off any of the poison gases yet or i managed to kill one ancient sentry so far but yeah pretty pretty tough so with that being said we go directly to the top of turn number three and we roll off for our uh, activation so i get to go first so we'll come back after my very first set of activations all right so that's it directly the end of turn number three and this end of all of our activations so let's talk what happened first so for my very first activation i took a bjorgen thundrick and i flew him out of harm's way just because i did not feel comfortable him being surrounded by three different ancient sentries that cause all kinds of harm at the same time when he flew back his normal movement allowance and then opened fire this energy weapon uh missile weapon i was able to put one wound directly onto one of these advanced sentries meanwhile as you can see the advanced sentries on the bottom here started moving up as quick as they can in order to attack bjorgen thundrick over here, unfortunately, Kazgan Draxkir failed his life test, so he suffered three wounds directly onto him from the poison gas leak, so that part was brutal. But in the end, I was finally able to neutralize this gas trap, so no harm, no foul there. Luckily for me, the rest of my team did pass their life test, so no problem with the gas chamber from that. And at the same time, two of these ancient sentries did try to swarm Garrett Allenson. Luckily for me, though, they weren't able to cause any injuries. I, at the same time, was able to put some uh, wounds directly onto one of these ancient sentries and I was able to kill them. Luckily for me, my armored force edge is really helping me out right now, even though I'm outnumbered by these armored sentries. And that pretty much ends turn number three on this one. So with turn number three over with, we go directly to the top of turn number four and I get to go first. All right, so that takes directly to the top of the turn. And for my very first activation, I activated Borgen Young uh, Thundrick. He basically did a flying action across this wall, directly landing on one inch of this terminal. I then used activation to do reaction test to drop the poison gas, and I was pretty much successful. Meanwhile, of course, we did alternating turns. Of course, as you can see, the three ancient sentries are slowly making their way directly back to this area in order to attack Bjorg and Thundrick. Meanwhile, over here at the top of the screen, Kazgan Draxkewer used his point-to-point -point teleportation system to teleport himself directly to this top terminal 
and for his activation, he was able to disarm that poison gas as well. So no more poison gas for my team, so therefore no one has to really suffer anymore from that. So that was pretty awesome. Meanwhile, up here on the top, of course, I was able to finally kill off one of these ancient sentries. Uh, Garrett Allison actually pulled back and actually opened fire with his missile weapon, able to put one wound. And through the direct uh, firing of my two other members of Dead Eye Lund, as well as Enric Ironhell, combined with Bion, combined fire, was able to finally finish off the very last of these sentries. So that part was epic as well. So with that being said, all the poison gas is shut off. The only thing I gotta do now is kill these three troublesome uh, sentries over here, and I'll be all kinds of golden. So with that being said, we go directly to the top of turn number five, and I get to go first. All right, so we're back after my very first activation. As you see, I had Bjorg and Thundric fly back once again, opened fire with his weapon. I was able to kill one of these guys as well, which is all kinds of awesome. Now, I actually, actually I'm sorry, I was able to kill one of them. I actually put a wound on one of these uh, ancient sentries. That's what ended up happening. Now, of course, we did alternate turns. Ancient sentries, of course, moved their way up directly towards Bjorg and Thundric. One of them did actually move up to this top position, but I had Kaz Gandraxkir use his point to point teleporter because he had line of sight from that top, top, top uh, gas tank. All the way to this guy, had charge directly into him, attack with his heavy weapon, was able to put that guy out of action, no problem. So that part was pretty epic. Meanwhile, the rest of my uh, crew actually moved up over here. As you can see, Dead Eye Lend actually moved up, opened fired, was able to finish off uh, this guy here, this sentry that was getting close to Bjorg and Thundric. So that part was pretty awesome. Also had Eric Ironhelm move up as quick as he can to this window. So that way he can shoot his next turn if we have to. And then finally, Garrett Allison actually looped around and button hooked around this wall here. So that way he can shoot with his energy missile weapon as well. All that I have left is one enemy fighter and that will make it my challenge for this one. So with that being said, we go directly to the top of turn number six and I get to go first. All right, so that takes us directly to the top of turn number six. And of course I get to activate first. The first thing I actually do is I open fire with Bjorg and Thundric. Bjorg and Thundric opens fire with his energy missile weapon. I was able to put two wounds directly out of this guy. I was able to steal the initiative real quick by rolling a six because I had and Draxkir then charged in and chopped this guy down with his ever weapon. And with that, all the ancient sentries are dead. Same thing with all the gas turned off. So because of that, that brings us a victory for this one. So right off the bat, it's right now in the post game. None of my guys actually leveled up because everybody just got uh, plus one experience. So Kaz Gandrax here got plus one experience. Same with Garrod Allenson, Dead Eye Lund, as well as Enric Ironhell. My leader actually, Bjorgen Thunder, got two experience points on that one because he's the commander. And with that, that ends challenge number one. So with challenge number one over with, let's go ahead and talk about where I'm going next. Gonna roll a D6. Uh, sorry, D12 rather, my bad. That gives me a four on that one. So number four, according to the challenge table, means I will be going to challenge number three, which means I'll be going to the repair bay next as my crew journeys further into the darkened and mysterious depths of Space Station Zero. So that's gonna do it for those of you guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. You guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's gonna do it for this week, guys. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out and stay classy.